everyone, my name is Caleb Krim and today I'm going to be showing you guys my best tips and tricks to help you get better distance off the tee. Let's jump right into it. So in this video, we're going to go through three phases of training. In the first step, I'm going to show you guys how to immediately get better distance if you are brand new to the game and are just learning how to throw a disc. In the step, second step, we're going to incorporate a specific run-up called the X-step. And in the third phase, we will go over the finishing touches and fine-tune the mechanics of the distance drive. First thing we're going to go over is how to grip the disc off disc when you want to get better drive. You're going to take the four fingers and curl them along the rim of the disc. We call this the rim. So take your four fingers, curl them on the along the rim, get a nice firm grip, and then put your thumb on top just about like that. This first throw that I'm about to show you is how I would recommend going about throwing if you are brand new to the game, just learning how to throw, and want to go ahead and get some power off of the tee box. Go up to the front center of the tee. You will not need a run up for this type of throw. Plant your feet nice and firm, and you want them to be 90 degrees away from whatever direction you want to throw. So if you're throwing straight and you're right-handed, you want your feet 90 degrees to the left. And if you're left-handed and you want to throw straight, you want your feet 90 degrees to the right. I'm right-handed, so I'll throw this way. You're going to uh, take the disc and grip it just like I showed you and put it up to chest level. Then you want your shoulder joint to be 90 degrees away from your body and your forearm also at a 90 degree angle. Your forearm should be parallel with your chest. Hold it at chest height and then you're going to reach back and extend your arm out straight. And you don't want to just reach out with this. We want to get the feet involved and the hips involved as well. So make sure you rotate your body so you can get better pull through. And then when you're actually doing the throwing motion, you're going to rotate your hips and feet at the same time. And you want to pull through with your shoulder and elbow. You don't want to swing out like this. You want to imagine that like you're knocking down a door with your elbow. Now I'll give you guys a little test throw using the exact same principles that I just demonstrated to you guys. Good grip, feet 90 degrees, forearm parallel, reach back, twist the feet, pull through with the hips. And I would say that's about 250, 300 feet. And once you've mastered that style of throwing and are hungry for some more power, it's time to incorporate the run up which is a very important disc golf fundamental called the X-Step. I'll just go ahead and show you guys the basics of the X-Step now. You're going to go ahead and start off, if you're right-handed, to the back right side of the tee pad. If you're left-handed, you'll do just the opposite of what I'm doing. You want to run up in a little bit of a diagonal line. So when you're, run, when you're running up, it's going to, you're going to run from the back right to the front left side of the tee pad. So again, gripping the disc the same way you would, and we're gonna pull through in the same way across our chest, but this time we're gonna focus on the footwork, and it's gonna go a little something like this. Your feet are pointing 90 degrees from the basket. You're gonna take one step, your right foot if you're right-handed. It's gonna go out in front of you. You wanna be in a little bit of a staggered stance. So this will be your first step. Your second step is going to cross over behind your foot. I'll show you that real quick. Cross over behind your foot like that, and this is where the X step gets its name. So just like that. Then your third step you're gonna take, bring the right foot back out and put it back in front. So kind of very similar to the first step. And then the fourth step is where the you're gonna pull through and initiate all the hips and shoulders. Swing and follow through. So now I will show you it just a little bit faster. Just like that. Show you it kind of at my normal speed now. And then if you want, you don't have to start flat footed. I like to take a pretty big run up uh, whenever I'm doing the X steps. So I'll take a couple steps. And then throw.
I know you guys probably couldn't see the shot on that one. I just wanted you to focus on the footwork, but it turned out pretty good. So I think that was a pretty good example of what to do for the X step. Okay, everyone, now we're on to the final phase of this video, phase three, in which we are going to put everything that we just learned together. And then I'm gonna show you guys some small things you can do to get quite a bit of distance increase in your throws. So putting all your throws together, you might be wondering kind of what that's gonna look like. Basically what that means is that at the same time that you are doing your third and fourth X step maneuvers, so the third step and then the fourth step swing and pull through, you're going to have your hips kind of facing away from the target, your, your arm is gonna be back, your shoulders through, and you want to, at the same time that you start to rotate your feet, you wanna pull through with everything else and make sure you get everything at the exact right time. Timing is the key. I can't say it enough. You'll probably hear it in a lot of other disc golf videos if you watch them, but really it's the, by far the most important thing. If, if you pull through with your hips, but then your arm and shoulder are lagging behind, you're gonna lose so much distance. So I'll try to give you guys a little bit of a test throw real quick, putting everything together so you can kind of see what it's going to look like. Another thing I wanted to talk about is some of the most common flaws I see in many amateur disc golfers forms. We're going to start from the ground and work our way up. The first one I see is with the feet and it is that when you go up to throw and you put your plant foot down, I see a lot of people's plant foot coming off the ground mid swing and popping so kind of like that and whenever you put your plant foot down you want it to stay firm. You kind of hop off the ground a little bit, your, your body's not in contact with the ground as much and you're going to lose power. The second thing is the hips. I also see a lot of players who don't go far enough back with their hips. They don't turn their hips away from the target. They just go up there and kind of only turn their hips about 90 degrees to the target. That's what you want for the feet, for your hips. You want them back more. You want them facing back towards, actually back towards the camera where I have now. I, I get my hips back there and pull. If you just put your hips back like this far, you're gonna lose, again, a lot of power. The third error I see is with your off arm. So for me, it's my left arm. If you're left-handed, it'll be your right arm. And it is that when you're in the last step of your release, taking your fourth step, next step and preparing to release the disc, I see a lot of people's left arms just kind of flail out behind them. And what you wanna do with your left arm is when you're pulling across, force the left arm up against your body because that will allow you to rotate faster. It's the same principle as if you're spinning in a chair. If you throw your legs and arms out, you're gonna spin slower. If you tuck them in really tight, you'll spin faster. So make sure when you're pulling through, tuck your off arm up against your body. So really this is a personal preference that I feel like a lot of the players I watch that throw really far, take the disc and throw it from about right here on their chest. I see a lot of players going for like the really high chest and it just doesn't seem to get as much power from what I've noticed analyzing players as the players who throw from down here. Um, I tend to throw from like right in between the chest and stomach area right about here. I won't say it's a flaw to go up higher or, or to go lower, really just do whatever works best for you. But for me and from what I've analyzed, best results come from somewhere right below your chest. And the last and perhaps the most important thing that you do not want to do is called rounding. And that is where, when you're going up to throw the disc, you come here to throw, and you just want to really mash on the disc, and you go up there to throw, and you reach way back here, or even just a little bit too far back, and you swing in a circle. It's going to cause you to, your aim, you might get some power off of it, but your aim is going to drastically decrease because you're pulling kind of around your body instead of just straight back. So really focus on pulling straight back and straight across your chest. Don't reach too far back. I see it all the time. Probably one of the most important things that you do not want to do on your disc golf drives. And the last thing I have for you guys before I conclude this video is that using the first method with no run-up, I can throw consistently about 300 feet 
using the second method, the X step, but not really focusing on any of the small details. I throw about 375 and using all the principles that I've learned so far, I usually throw anywhere from about 425 to 450 on average. So if you're already throwing that far, you're obviously doing something right. Definitely keep it up and do whatever works best for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you were able to learn some useful things from it. And if you enjoyed the video, please either consider subscribing to my channel or maybe giving this video a like. I would appreciate it so much. And I will see you in the next video.